Okay, go first. Yeah, me too. So I think there must be a lot of things coming into your guys' mind when you see Egypt and Greek. And there's a lot of difference between them. I know they're like in different periods, they have different culture, and uh, they believe in different gods. But there's something like really similar in their artwork, which is what we are going to discuss about. So let's jump into our first Egypt sculpture. So here we go. This is the so this is the seated statue of Pharaoh Capri, our dear friend Capri, and uh, he was made during the Old Kingdom, and uh, it's made out of limestone. So mm, and it has a funerary function, which is a general, really general function for the floral statue. And uh, I think the seated um, Calvary statue is the most traditional one for floral statue. And now let's take a closer look to the statue, okay? So let's look at his face. His face is so idealized, don't you think? And uh, here is a Line, uh, linen headdress on his hat, on his hat and his chain. There's a tattoo of a deer, which mm, makes the statue really special because those two things come only like you can see them only on the flower statue, which presents kinship and uh, to present like he's the royal, so it's really special. And then here's the so from the killed, uh, the killed really like to showcase his idealized upper body. And uh, let's take a look at his hand. His uh, right hand is squeezing at the fist, and his right hand, his and his left hand is softly put on his palm, uh, put on his left lap. So which presents like. He's capable of both being powerful and also he's capable of mercy. So, and uh, as you can see, he's in a really formulaic pose. And just remember this picture because we're going to jump into the next one and you're going to see a lot of similarity. So, this is the great statue we're going to talk about. It's the New York Chorus. And I hope just everyone can take a close look at first because you can see like there's something really similar going on. So the New York Chorus was uh, made during the ancient Greece and it's made out of marble. So even though uh, like very different period, but it's also in a really formulaic pose. It's like even though it's a pretty standing and the other one, the bronze statue but it's in a really like formulate frontal pose. And uh, as you can see, his face and his body are also really idealized. It's not like a real human being. It's really perfect. And uh, but there's and there's something like different between them also. Because it also has a funerary function. But at the same time, it can be a votive offering for the sanctuary, so which makes it like different. And uh, as we can see, uh, his nude, he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he doesn't wear a kilt, the nude is that he's wearing a choker necklace, which makes it like indistinguishable from the other Greek thought statue, statue because they, they all showcase their perfect idealized body and their new. So, uh, from the, and there's also something going on with their his gesture because as you can see, his left hand and the legs are slightly forward and the other side is slightly backward, which means like the grease people was trying to make it like more emotion. Uh, so even though they made it like 
a little bit stiff, but they were trying to make it like emotional. So we come to that different. So what we can tell by comparing these two statues, which is the input. So as we compare the statue, we can tell that Egypt artwork sculpture really has a strong influence towards Greece and Chinese sculpture. And that's it. Thank you guys. Any questions or comments?